for me to come to this work was uh, very personal, though that I have been involved uh, somewhat uh, in, in the work of trying to see an end to the um, war that Sri Lanka was engulfed. Uh, but uh, when my second son, who was a Sri Lankan military officer, was reported missing in action, that's the day that I say that the war was at my doorstep and never looked back again. I really um, put all my energy to see that my country is um, in peace and I'm still working towards that to have sustainable peace in, in Sri Lanka. First thing is of course to know exactly what happened. For that we had to come, you know, we had to come collectively so that's why we came together but then of course we immediately, you know, very soon we understood that if the war is there, there will be many more mothers and wives just like us. So we needed to stop the war. So, and, and to work with the women of the other side of the divide because they say, all went through the same pain. So that's why, I mean, that is where the energy came and that's where the energy is right now. We are from two sides of the divide. Each other's sons may have killed each other. So it is difficult, but you know, as mothers, it is for us, we need, need to do, especially because it was parents or mothers of missing people. So we needed to know the truth and we needed the other side's help to need, need the truth. So that's exactly where we could connect to each other. I mean, I don't think in the world they have really explored the possibility of using that kind of situation to build peace. I don't think so, because it is definitely difficult, but uh, and also it is, of course, uh, the pain. Normally what happens is these kind of issues are taken as political issues and exactly the war is more intensified because of them. But to really look into how you can build peace by that, you know, by bringing, by the pain, by, sh by knowing very well that both sides go through the same pain, exactly using that energy for peace building, I don't think it's much done, but it is a very, very good and, you know, possibility of bringing the parties together. For women, life matters much more than maybe property or money. I mean, I, I, that, that's exactly one of the biggest things that women bring differently than men to any conflict situation. For us, with our son, with our husband's alive, they're not wounded, it is the priority, not the fence. The fence can go maybe a little this side, that side, but if our sons and husbands are alive, that's our priority. I think that is what exactly women do bring in, in a larger picture as well. You know, I have a dream and for a long time and all my work is geared towards that one dream because I do believe the day that women, the way that women define security, if UN take it as their way of defining security, the world will be a better place. Why? For us, we, I feel for women, you have to make your enemy secured. Then the enemy will not be an enemy anymore. The insecurity feeling of the enemy is where they strike. Same in the animal world, everywhere. You feel insecure, you strike. But now, post 9-11, you make people much more insecure. And we have never found a solution. It is very difficult because it, it, it's not a quick solution. It's not like you take a painkiller for your pain. It's not that. The painkiller is you fight, fight it off, get it off. But this is you, you give the medicine to the root cause. So it takes time. It takes a lot of patience from your side. It takes a lot of time. So that's why it will be difficult, but for permanent solutions, that's the only way. And that's why we say that if women can define security in making the enemy secured, that will bring the ultimate result.